the fraction 2 and 1 half, for instance, what does that really mean? It means you have two whole candy bars plus 1 half of a candy bar, right? So you see how you have this fractional part added to a whole number. That's basically what, what a mixed number really is. You have a whole, number, whole part and a fractional part. So if you were dealing with algebraic fractions and wanted to simplify something like this, how would you do it? 8 plus 1 over x. Do you see how this kind of mimics the same thing? You have a whole part and you have a fractional part. How do you simplify it? Every one of these problems we're going to do is basically going to um, uh, be trying to teach you that every time you see a whole number, it's really this number over 1. So basically, once you know that, you can do any of these problems. So for instance, 8 over 1 plus 1 over x. Those two, those two problems are the same problem. So the whole part just becomes 8 over 1. And how do you add it to this? You have to get a common denominator, right? So can I multiply this denominator by anything to give me x? Um, of course I can. I can multiply this fraction by x, so then I'll have to multiply the top by x. So when I do that, I will have 8x over x plus 1 over x. So that means the denominator stays the same as x, and I have 8x plus 1 in the numerator. 8x plus 1 over x, that's the final answer. I can't simplify that anymore, I can't factor it, I can't really do anything else, so I'm done. So anytime you see something hanging out here added to a fraction, just put it over 1, and then the problem basically becomes as all of the other problems have, have proceeded. So for instance, a over b minus 3 looks complicated until you realize that really it's just a over b minus 3 over 1, right? So it's really just two fractions, as it always has been. Now how can you get a common denominator? You have a b here and a 1 here. So the way I can get a common denominator is just multiply this times b over b, and then I'll have a common denominator of b. So I'll have a over b minus 3b over b. And so then the denominator that I have is obviously b, and the numerator is a minus 3b. That's the final answer. Can't really simplify it anymore, can't cancel anything, so I'm doing all the regular things. Now let's make it a little more complicated. What if I have 6x minus x over x plus 1? Now this is your whole part. Your whole part is this, your fractional part is this. But this is again can be written over 1. So that's how we're going to handle it. 6x over 1 minus x over x plus 1. Make sure you understand that those two lines are the same. Now, the denominators I have is 1 and this. So the easiest way to do it is just to multiply by x plus 1. And I have to do it to the top, x plus 1. And then my denominator is going to be x plus 1. So I'm looking for commonality in the, in the denominators. So here, what I'm going to have is... Uh, doing this guy right here, it's going to basically be 6x times x plus 1 minus x over the denominator x plus 1. Basically, I just take this guy minus the x, and the denominator is now the same. So now I have to multiply this in, 6x times x and 6x times 1. So what I'm going to get is 6x squared plus, and then when I multiply it here, it'll be plus 6x, the minus x comes along for the ride, and then I have x plus 1. All right, so the 6x squared is unchanged. 6x minus x is 5x, so I have 6x squared minus 5x over x plus 1. And let me just double check, I got the right answer. 6x squared minus, uh, minus 5x over x plus 1. Aha, now here's an example of even when I make a mistake. You know, I could erase this and, and edit it out of the video, but you see what happened. The 6x squared carried over, but this 6x minus x, or minus 1x, is positive 5x, and I accidentally wrote it as a negative. So really this needs to be a positive sign right there. And so the answer is 6x squared plus 5x over x plus 1. Everybody can make mistakes. Don't you ever forget that. Anybody tells you that they never made a mistake in a math problem is absolutely lying. I make mistakes all the time. It's just that you have to, when you detect a mistake, go back and figure out what you did wrong. And that's why I show all of these steps. So I could go back and say, oh, here's where it was. This is where I made the mistake. All right, so the next one's going to be a little more complicated because instead of adding two things together, we'll be adding three. But the process will basically be the same. x minus 8 over uh, x plus 1 
minus 6x minus 2 over x plus 1. So I have three items. Uh, basically, they're all subtracted. Now, the first one is x, but I can always write that as x over 1. So um, we need to be thinking about that. In fact, you can kind of go over here and just say, well, this is really x over 1. That's how you handle that. Now, what's my common denominator going to be? Well, these match, so that's going to be my common denominator there. I can easily turn this into x plus 1 using multiplication. So how do I do that? It's going to be x over the 1 I still have from the bottom. I'm going to multiply top and bottom by x plus 1 x plus 1, x plus 1. That will give me the common denominator that I seek. The rest of everything is I'm just going to be, you know, kind of copying. 8 over x plus 1 minus 6x minus 2 over x plus 1. Okay, so now what I need to do, there's a couple ways you could do it. You could distribute stuff in and then do this, uh, the uh, uh, add the fractions. Let me go ahead and add the fractions first. The denominator is just going to be x plus 1. So it's going to be x plus 1 down here. And the top, I have this quantity. I'm not going to multiply it yet. Let's do, save that for later. x times x plus 1. But I know that I'm subtracting 8, so I'll put that there. And then I know I'm subtracting the 6x minus 2, but I'm subtracting the entire thing. And that's a complicated term, so I'm going to wrap it in parentheses, 6x minus 2. And I'll extend this down there. So now I can do the distribution. I have x times x is x squared, x times 1 is x. So on the top it'll be x squared plus x. The minus 8 comes along for the ride. And then this negative gets distributed to make negative 6x and positive 2. And on the bottom it's just going to be x plus 1. And now I can look to see if I can combine terms. So the x squared, I don't have any other terms with x squared, so I'm going to leave that alone. Uh, so it's going to be x squared. And then I have an x and a minus 6x, so that's going to be negative 5x. And then I have a negative 8, positive 2 gives me negative 6. So that's what's on the top. And then I have x plus 1 on the bottom. Now, this is a trinomial. Let me at least try to factor it and see if it is factorable. Maybe it'll cancel with what's on the bottom. I don't know yet, but let me try. So on the bottom, it'll be x plus 1. So I have an x here and an x here to give me the x squared. And then I have this. 2 times 3 is 6. Also, 1 times 6 is 6. And I'm shooting for a negative 5 in the middle. Now, the only way this really works is if I put a positive there and a negative there and double check yourself. Multiplying this gives me negative 6. Multiplying these gives me positive x, this gives me negative 6x, you add them together, you get a negative 5x. So that's the correct factorization, and of course it's nice because this then cancels with this. So the answer that you get in the final answer is just x minus 6. All right, that's the final answer. I just have one more, uh, exact same process here, but this one's going to be a little more complicated. a minus 1 minus, and I have a fraction here, a squared plus a minus 5 over a plus 2. So again, it's a little bit ugly, only because I have these two guys out here. Um, but don't forget that you can kind of write this over 1, and you can write this over 1, and then you immediately see that your common denominator is just going to be this, because I can multiply this fraction by this, and I can multiply this fraction by this, so this will be my common denominator. So what I'm going to then do is it'll be a times a plus 2, a minus, or uh, plus 2. All I did was multiply top and bottom by a plus 2. The minus sign is still intact. In the top, I'll just leave the 1 there for clarity, a plus 2, and I'll leave the 1 in the bottom for clarity. You don't really have to do that, but I'm going to leave it there for clarity, a plus 2. Uh, and then the third term, again, is subtracted because you have a minus sign right here, and I'm just going to leave it alone. I'm going to call it a squared plus a minus 5 over a plus 2. Now I have a common denominator that works. All right. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to set an equal sign. I'm going to say the next start step of the problem is going to be when we add all these together, this is going to be the common denominator, a plus 2. And ultimately what it's going to be is this term minus this term minus this term. That's what it's going to be. But this term here, I can multiply the a in and get a squared plus 2a. So I'm going to write that here, a squared plus 2a. This minus sign I'm going to keep intact, a plus 2. 
I'm going to keep it here. I just want, don't want to do too many things at once, really. The minus sign here, and then this guy right here, you need to wrap it in parentheses, a squared minus, I'm sorry, plus a minus 5. All right, the reason you don't want to do too many things at once is because you're going to end up distributing this in and this negative here, and if you start doing all of that at once, you're going to get confused. So the next step of the solution is going to be to do that. So I have the a squared plus 2a. Then this is going to be negative a, negative 2. And then I'm going to do negative a squared, negative a, positive 5. So negative a squared, negative a, positive 5. And on the bottom, a plus 2. Now let's see what we can do. I have a positive a squared here and a negative a squared there, so they cancel and just add to 0. Okay. Now the interesting thing here, check this out. I've got a positive 2a, but here I have a negative a and a negative a. So these negative a's are going to make negative 2a, which is going to cancel with the positive 2a. So really I can cancel this with all of these. So really all you have in the top, okay, left, is numbers. You have a negative 2 and a positive 5. So that's going to give you 3, positive 3. So on the top, you will just have 3, and on the bottom, you will just have a plus 2. And that is the final answer. So again, these problems were a little difficult, but really it's following the same recipe. You just make them over 1. If you don't see there's a fraction there, make them into a fraction. Get the common denominators appropriately. Do the subtractions. Be careful about these parentheses. Carry these parentheses through because they're going to affect the answer when you distribute things in. Add everything together and then get your answer. Make sure you can solve all of these yourself and then follow me on to the next lesson. We're going to talk about long division in, uh, with fractions. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.